Hello friends! In a previous video, I showed you my replica of the Commodore A501 Release 5 memory expansion for the Amiga 500. I have now completed a replica for the A501 Release 6. I now have both for sale in my eBay store. I never ask for donations or sponsorships on my channel, instead offering real tangible accessories for the Amiga as a way of support. If you feel so compelled, visit my store on eBay, which you can find via a link in the description of this video. I ship internationally. Now on to the assembly. Just to make a point um, of this, uh, some of the designate the capacitor designations, the, the small value capacitors, are are still listed in uh, microfarads, even though in most cases you'd be looking at, at nanofarads. So, for example, C9 C9 is 0.1 microfarad. But it's, uh, if you're looking for it, you'll have an easier time finding one that's 100 nanofarads. And then all of these capacitors um, for the memory and the logic uh, are all 0.33 microfarad. And those are, of course, going to be 330 nanofarad. And by the way, these are not tantalums. These are ceramic capacitors. They're ju they just don't happen to be axial. I have a bunch of these. Just, I mean, the original capacitors are axial, admittedly, so the look isn't going to be perfect. Um, but I just have so many of these, and uh, you know, I feel like I should just get rid of them. So what do we got? Seven of these. <laughs> I think this goes like this. Yeah, I think so. Because the positive is the rim. Yeah. By the way, okay, so you're saying to yourself, what's wrong with you? You 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 left a resistor in there and you're gonna put a CR2032. Ah, but I'm not. I'm gonna put an LIR2032, a rechargeable lithium battery so I can leave this resistor here and this battery can be charged no problem. At this point I actually installed the 2032 battery holder slightly wrong. Here is future me to explain. Unlike the release 5 of these boards this positive battery terminal uh, there's there's two pads for the positive and one pad for the negative. You know those, those um, stock batteries um, have two pins on one side and one pin on the other and the two pins are on the positive. Well on the release 5 those two pins are bridged on the board. You know there, there's a trace between the two. On, on this board's design there is not. And so 
if you go to install a, one of these CR2032 battery sockets, um, you have to solder it to, to this one over here. You have to solder it to this one over here, not this one, because this one has will have no connection. So I'm going to have to move that from here to here. Do the vintage bend on our capacitors. Okay. Um, RP 911 and 912 are uh, were never fitted in the original. Um, did I say something about that on here? Our optional DRD DRD termination. Our optional DRD. In other words, the data lines you can optionally do uh, termination on them. Anyway, so let's do my technique for because you can't get the 54 pin. Is that what it is? A 54 pin. 56 pin? 56 pin. You can't get a 56 pin connector, but link in the description, uh, you can get a couple of smaller ones. So these are made by AMP and their number on them is 1530, whatever. Um, it's, I think, I guess, what is that, a 30 pin? Is that what it is? Anyway, so uh, we're going to, it's perfect, other than the fact that it's not long enough. So we're going to cut a piece. We're going to make use two of them to make one. I don't think we're quite there. Took quite a bit off there. Now it fits much more loosely, which is good. And that looks good. Looks just fine. So we're going to solder the big piece in and then we're going to go back and uh, probably glue the, them together. Which Look at this mess. Look at this mess. You want to know why this mess is here? Because I couldn't get my new A501 Release 6. I couldn't get it to work. I tested every single connection. Um, at, at a certain point, I, I thought I had a problem connecting signal-wise into the motherboard, but that turned out to be not true. So that cost me at least two tries there, but what turned out to be the problem, and I was certain that I had made a mistake on the board, but actually, as it turns out, version the first version of this board that I did is just about perfect. It's as perfect as I could have expected. Do you want to know what it turned out to be? I have a collection of logic chips that I got at some point. Pretty nice to have laying around for these types of purposes. And I loaded this with three new logic chips, new old stock logic chips. Obviously the clock chip, the RTC chip is not something that most people would keep in their stock, but I actually had a bunch of those from last time. By the way, you can buy them from me. I, <clears throat> I don't know why, but I bought like 
30 of them or something and I put a bunch of them up on my eBay store. Check the description. I have them. Anyway, so uh, 74, 74.27, a 74.86, and a 74.163. Now, <clears throat> there's usually letters in between the 74 and the rest of the designators. There's usually an F or an LS. It actually doesn't matter. Sometimes there's nothing. I have three 74 LS 27s in stock and all three of them were bad. The only way I got this board to work was to put the original one that I had taken off the original board. I can't believe I had three. And of course, what's that going to do? When you have all three chips bad, what are you going to do? How many steps are you going to take before realizing you have three bad chips? And these are, you know, there's no solder marks on them. As far as I know, they're new old stock along with all my other logic chips, but nope, all three of these, bad. Oh my God. Yeah, as a last ditch effort, uh, I mean, the last testing I did was I tested each pin of each one of these chips all the way back into the motherboard to make sure that I had good connections on the sockets, that I had good connections on this connector, and that I didn't uh, that my traces were going correctly to the right places and sure enough I, I that took me an hour and a half two hours to do that final test and everything was perfect everything I when you're thinking about by the way to, to do something like that you use the schematic so I finally printed out the the this is the A500 Release 6. This is a Release 6 motherboard, but it could be a Release 5. It wouldn't matter. Um, having the Release 6 uh, schematic gave me the last page is the Release 6 A501. If you have the Release 5 schematic, the last page is the Release 5 A501. Just FYI. Anyway, so... The first couple pages of the schematic are the memory controlling and logic and you got processor, you got Agnes, you got Gary. So this is all memory controlling and memory access. And then the second one is the actual memory and then you have the connector that goes to the this expansion connector and then the very last, so this is like schematic page one and schematic page two. And then the very last page is the A501. And of course using these three, using these three pieces of paper and then basically just testing every pin with continuity actually ohmage I'm, I'm I was measuring them with ohms because I'm going through uh, resistors and I was why not test those at the same time so they're all 68 ohm resistors so these resistor networks so each uh, the data path isn't going through resistors but all of the addressing is so when I'm testing the addressing and I'm testing them all over here to these two address logic chips, I am uh, I'm getting 68 ohms of resistance and that tells me that the resistors are working too. So it's a little tip. Um, you know, you try to go, if you're trying to test something, the best way to do it is to go from the furthest end to the furthest end. And in this case, you know, you're thinking, okay, uh, well, yeah, basically all the addressing comes out of these chips. So you're going to be testing pins on these chips against the pins on these ones. The data path, the, the data um, pins on the chips are going through these sets of chips here. It says data path right there on the motherboard. Um, and, and then from there it gets to the processor, but you'd think, okay, I'll just test it the processor. You're not going to get a good test because you have these logic chips in, the, in between. And so you're just testing, you test from the motherboard's logic chips to the chips on your board. And everything tested perfect. Everything was fine. It was like three different, four different tests I ran. It's just ridiculous. But um, God, to think I had bad 7427 chips. That's going to get you every time, isn't it? I mean, I, I tested it. It didn't work. I swapped out all the logic once with different chips. It still didn't work. And then I went on this crazy freaking wild goose chase trying to find out what the problem is 
And it turns out I had all three of these are bad. It actually doesn't matter that all three of them are bad. The fact that two of them were bad, and I never would have suspected that, and that's when I went down the rabbit hole. But I decided I would put the original Logic chips back uh, from the original A501 into my board, and boom, works. Anyway, so uh, here it is. I'm going to put it up on my eBay store in case anybody wants to buy it. Um, I think it looks really nice. You can't replicate this, uh, at least not with a reasonable cost, replicating this this gold or brass looking area where the ground plane is. Um, although I noticed that there were two different pictures on the Amiga hardware database. One that looks like this and one that looks closer to this. So I was glad to see that. That way this isn't too far off of one of the originals. Anyway, thanks for watching, friends, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.